Hello, this is Peter Englander with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We are in the studios of Metro East Community Media East. Uh, I'm sorry, Metro East Community Media to talk to <coughs> candidates running in the November 2018 general election. We have invited all candidates who filed for this race. There are many reasons during busy campaign seasons for candidates accepting or uh, not being able to appear. With me today is Jeff Reardon, running for State Representative 48th District, who has been able to accept our invitation. We are sorry that one of the candidates in this race, Sonny Yellett, has been unable to accept our invitation. We urge voters to visit the League of <coughs> Women Voters of Oregon website and to use the League's vote411.org website for comprehensive coverage where candidates may also choose to include more information, some including their own YouTube videos. So Jeff, what is your top priority and how will you accomplish it? Hey, well, Peter, thank you uh, for having me on today. I really enjoy the opportunity to be here and, and talk to folks. Um, you know, there's so many issues that, uh, that face us. So revenue, cost containment are two of them. If we don't deal with those, we can't do any of the other things that we need to in, de in terms of education, uh, which is my, one of my passions, and, um, and, and providing other public services. But when I boil it down and just in the last several seconds had to decide, what am I going to talk about? My real passion is career pathways. So I'm a former career technical education teacher, former school board member, and now I'm chairing the House Higher Ed and Workforce Development Committee. So what I'm focusing on a lot and what I talk to everybody about is career pathways. And so if you have career pathways that are clearly defined, and I'm talking about the entire educational system, which not everybody does. So from early childhood, K-12, post-secondary, and workforce, the whole P-20 system. Um, we I work toward developing uh, a system where all, students at all levels, including you know, opportunity youth who, who may have dropped out, uh, disconnected youth, those who are in the workforce right now, those who are in a K-12 system, everybody can see the relevance of their studies. They always answer that old question, is, why am I studying this? We really should answer that someday. Um, and then students are challenged. but provide the supports they need. We have so much a need for uh, counseling, actually to feed the homeless in our schools, things like that. So make sure they're well supported. Uh, but students are challenged. And uh, I guess I said that already, sorry. Uh, students are prepared for a future of rapidly evolving technology. So they're not just studying what's happening today, but learning how to learn and how to adapt in our, in our system where we're there are going to be jobs out there we don't even know what they are for five years from now. How do we prepare kids for that? And then I, I want to make those make sure that those investments are made carefully and strategically. And I think when we do that, we make those investments. There are going to be clear pathways for uh, jobs for kids that are and and those in the workforce that uh, that where they have skills and they're paid and it's not just a job but they, on a career path as well. So it's really tying together our economic system. What are, the, what are the goals? How are we gonna grow Oregon? But tie that together with our entire education system and really view those two in parallel and mutually supporting ways. Uh, All right, well, our, our uh, other questions relate to both of those things. So the next question is, what steps will you take to ensure more Oregonians are qualified and hired for Oregon jobs? Well, I, I hope I just uh, started to address that. And uh, I am, uh, like I said, I'm chair of the Higher Ed Workforce Committee. So I have an opportunity then to uh, work with the workforce system and with industry to help define what the, some of those jobs are. I think one way I can help is I'm also in conversation with my own colleagues but also people that are in business and industry. Because one of the things we have to do is we have to bring people to the table, business, labor, and all of my friends in Salem to address this, the serious uh, revenue problems, the serious cost containment issues that we have. And we have to do it. The time is long past where we can continue to kick the can down the road. And we have to address these issues and we have to get on the same page. So it's gonna take some strong leadership. A lot of that leadership is actually uh, 
happening right now, we have a, a student success tour that's uh, about to wrap up, and we've had several of my colleagues that have been traveling the state, talking to the uh, school communities and to local uh, residents, what's important to them, and uh, based on that, there will be some proposals for funding policy, and we can have a legitimate discussion. What do you want to see in the education system? What do you want them to pay for? And uh, so I'm hoping that uh, we can we can work through that model. Uh, it worked on the transportation system, where we, uh, again, some of my colleagues, I wasn't on a team, but uh, they traveled the state and really found out what was important. And we were able to pass a $5.7 billion transportation package. So that model, we're following it again. You were, uh, spoke about the workforce training system. Can yeah. you speak a little bit more about what that is and how that relates to what you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, ab absolutely. So um, let me talk a little bit about in 2017, in, in that session, um, I worked with, uh, I found out really that there are we have an Oregon Workforce Investment Board, which is uh, spends the federal funds that come in. They also oversee nine local workforce boards. So there might be one in Bend, there's, there's one locally, and so forth. And they try to figure out, do the planning for how do we develop a workforce, what's needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I also realized that we have six different state agencies that work on the same sort of things. What I did is I drafted a bill that allowed or required all of those to sit at the ta same table. So you now have all the workforce boards, you have higher education, you have the Youth Development Council, uh, Bureau of Labor and Industry, and about three others. Oh, DHS has two different groups that, are, that deal with job training. So get the six different agencies that do job training, uh, get the higher ed system, on K-12 is in there as well. So they are at least hearing the same information and very optimistic that through that process, um, you know, we'll get better results. And that's where I, th I think we can do that job of focusing on the industry and the state's goals for our economy. How do we grow our economy? What, what's industry need? And uh, have that kind of work down through the education system. So, okay, great, thank you. Um, let's go back to education a little bit. How can the legislature provide stable, adequate, and long-term funding for public <laughs> education? Well, no, that's a little bit harder. Um, I don't have the I don't I don't have the answer for you today. I wish I could just point to some silver bullet that just says you know we can uh, if we would just tax the rich and you know we'd all be uh, great. It'd be fine. But it's a, a revenue is something that's that's so complex. Um, I'm going to go back to what I think we need to do is, is get the right people to the table and have that discussion. I know that um, the uh, business community through uh, the Oregon Business Plan, they've been working on what are some of the things that we need to do and uh, they're ready to, I think, step forth and have that legitimate conversation. I, um, I hope that the others, uh, you know, the, the large unions and uh, my own leadership are equally as ready and we'll, like I said, they've got to come to the table and be willing to make the give and take, the tough decisions that are going to advance our education system, the entire system, and uh, help Oregon grow. All right. Well, thank you very much, You're Jeff. Welcome. You're welcome. This has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The general election is Tuesday, November 6th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates, the ballot measures, and exercise your right to vote.